Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. It's still a little chilly for me, but uh, the warm weather's coming. It's supposed to be sunshiny all week and in the 70s, so we'll have a good, a good week ahead of us weather-wise. Let's open with prayer, and then we'll get to our announcements. Great loving God, we thank you for one more day. You don't promise us tomorrow, but 
you've given us today. Even if you don't give us the whole day, we will take what we have and give you the glory. We thank you for our mothers today, uh, whether they were the best mothers ever or not. We thank you for them. We thank you for uh, their lives, their witness, their dedication. Uh, we thank you, Lord. For those moms that have gone on to be with you, we thank you for them. For those moms that are still here with us, we thank you for them. If our moms are still with us, I hope that we are able to visit with them today or to call them to let them know we love them. Lord, give us a heart for you and a heart to serve you. We pray for this day when we worship you, may we worship in spirit and in truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So there's a few announcements. If you open your bulletin to the last page, the back page, that's where our calendar is. And I've got a few updates just to remind you. There's no youth group tonight. Be with your moms. It's Mother's Day. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, the choir changed their practice times again. And uh, maybe we'll say with this time, I don't know. Maybe we'll be announcing a new time next week. But uh, they're meeting at 7 o'clock, 7 to 8.30. So scratch through the 6.30 and put 7 there. Also want to share with you that there's no dominoes uh, this uh, Saturday evening. Uh, there's another event that some people will be going to, so you know uh, we encourage you to come next month for dominoes. And also I uh, wanted to share with you that there'll be a congregational meeting after church next Sunday. So after the service next Sunday, there'll be a congregational meeting and two of our lay people We'll be presenting to you some of the things that are going on in the denomination of the United Methodist Church. So we encourage you to come out and be informed at that uh, at that time. All right. There are other announcements in your bulletin. Please make note of them. And next week is the noisy offering, and we're about halfway to our 37th well. So praise the Lord for that. And we encourage you to give generously uh, to our noisy offering next week. Amen. Let's continue with our opening hymn. The opening hymn, well, <laughs> the opening hymn is Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. As we're able to stand.
of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the wicked and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We invite everyone to sign our attendance. You may be seated. So if you would like to contact um, one of the contact information, please do so. Scripture reading is Ruth 1, 1 through 18. Naomi loses her husband and sons. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab to live there. Now, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then go to birth to sons, would you wait till, until they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Two praises this morning. One, our two sons are here with us. Amen. Bruce and Bruce and Dale. And uh, we have another praise. That is, we have a second uh, great granddaughter born this week, uh, Carol and Ruth. And uh, to use Air Force terminology, we have two more in the hangar. All right. All right. In the hangar. Okay. Got a little praise up here? Oh, oh go ahead. Oh. It. It's all that can hear you. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, I just want to give praise. One, um, yesterday I was at a photography gig. I'm a photographer, and I tumbled down a lot of steps. And by the grace of God, I just sprained my thumb. I have a few bruises, no broken bones, and I'm here today. So. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Anybody else with a praise? Right here. Right there. Walter? So, the young lady who just stood up to say she tumbled down the steps is the one who's going to give me her kidney. Amen. Amen. As we tumbled down the steps yesterday, I went to the hospital to make sure that kidney was okay. <laughs> that wasn't the only reason he came. So I am thankful for her. She's wearing blue and I'm wearing blue. You can put two together, so. All right. So we thank God for her. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Walter. I'm so happy to be here today with our family here. Uh, this is the church that we uh, came to when I was a uh, child. And uh, so it really means a lot. Uh, we had my dad's memorial service on Friday, and our whole family came to celebrate his life at the Naval Academy Chapel. And so our daughter uh, decided this would be an appropriate weekend to celebrate our grandson. And um, we're happy to be here. Amen. Amen. And some of you remember the Churchfield family? Yes. Major Churchfield was our youth director when we were kids. And, uh, Praise the Lord for them being here. Uh, good morning, Kurt Shabestel. Uh, since it's Mother's Day, and since the church fields are here, and since we're being led by uh, Reverend Ray, uh, I go back to 69, 70, 71 when the church fields were here. I was, uh, when I was 13, 1970, unexpectedly, my dad passed away. Uh, my mom had enough presence of mind to put uh, certain men in my life to take that void, to minimize that void, and she made me continue to come to church when I was 13, and my friends didn't have to, and, uh, and come to the Methodist Youth Fellowship, which was led by, at the time, Major uh, Bill Churchfield. Uh, and uh, like your daughter, Judy said, there was a very lovely memorial service for him at the Academy this weekend. And, uh, just all the accomplishments, and uh, you know, it was just it, it made me so uh, happy to know that he he led, he led a very uh, uh, you know important and uh, wonderful life for our country in the military. But but also on a personal note, both he and Reverend Ray's father, Reverend Mack, when I was 13, 14, 15, he kept me on the right track, and uh, and I really appreciate that. But if you think I'm a piece of work now, I would have done a lot. 
Is anybody married to you? <laughs> All right, two more categories. We want the mom with the most kids. Does anybody have 12 kids? 12 children or more, these could be, these could be adopted, these could be biological, 12 or more. 10 or more. Man, families are small these days. Nine or more, eight or more. I'll give you a chance to get your hand up because you're probably tired. Um, set up, oh, we got eight or more back here. How many? Six, we'll get, we'll get there. Any, anybody with eight or more? Anybody with seven or more? Anybody with six besides the ring? <laughs> All right. We have a winner. <laughs> All right. This is an unusual category. This last one. The mom who was a first time mom, the oldest. So you were the old, you, you're like, if you had a child from 40 on. Right. You hear what I'm saying? All right, wait a sec. We might have one here. So I want the, your first child, and you're the oldest who had a first child. Does that make sense? Okay, was anybody 50 or above? 48 or above. 47. I'll go down slowly. 46. 45 and above. 44 and above for your first child. 43 and above. 40, give me a hand. 41. Okay. 42 and above. <laughs> 41 and above for your first child. There you go. That's why the Churchfields came today, to get the flowers. Let's go to prayer concerns. Um, well, pray for, continue to pray for Walter. Um, we're thankful that people are coming forward to donate kidneys, whether they get their kidney or they donate a kidney that gives him a kidney. Um, but dialysis is, if you've ever been through it or you know someone's been through it, it's not easy. There have been mornings I've called Walter on the phone while he's in treatment, and I hear the anguish in his voice, whether he's getting needles and maybe the nurse isn't doing a good job and sticks him four times trying to get the needle in. Um, I've talked to, this morning, he called me and said he was having a rough morning. Uh, today would have been the day treatment. So you got Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sunday would be in the sequence, but they don't do it on Sunday, they do it on Monday. So the weekends sometimes are hard because your body goes for that every two day treatment and then you go three days. So please keep Walter in your prayers. Are there others that we need to lift in prayer? Microphone, please. You can. But others might not be able to. <laughs> All right, try it now. Hello. There you okay, go. You can hear me. Um, I just want to ask prayer for a great, my great nephew's wife is going to have a baby. And she's having a very difficult um, pregnancy and in the emergency room a lot. Her name is Allie. They're, they just moved to Texas. She's going to be a border patrol. It, it's just not a good situation, but I just would ask that you pray for her. She's really struggling. So not only pray for her, but all those who are on the border protecting our country. Yes, yes. All right, others? That's correct. Yes. Um, I saved my phrase. Uh, uh, I have a phrase that on my tumors are subsiding. Already. Praise the Lord. Keep Debbie in our prayers. Amen. I was able to visit this week with um, Ida Ann and Jim, and they're doing well, but uh, at home. Keep them in your prayers. I'm trying to remember now. This is a senior moment. Um, I also visited with, yes, Carl and Betty, and Carl is at home, and Carl is doing well, but uh, trying to gain strength. Uh, he was sitting in his chair in his room, and we visited with them. And then I visited also 
Norley. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad other people have better memories than I do. Uh, visit with Norley, and she was getting her hair done. And so she was in the, the stylist room there at the home she lives in, and I sat in a chair opposite her, and I asked, you know, was her hair supposed to be purple? And she looked at me, she goes, no. I said, well, she might have to start over. And, and the, the stylist looked at me like, <laughs> so I said, oh no, it's not purple, it's yellow. So I got a few laughs out of them already, but uh, uh, we're just so thankful for them. Keep them in your prayers. And anyone else for prayers this morning? All right, let's turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. The Lord's Prayer is printed in your bulletin. It will also be on the screen, and the prayer time will end with that. But Minister Walter will lead us now in prayer. As we look to the Lord to seek help, dear gracious Father, Lord, we come to you this morning as humble as we, as we know how, Lord. Lord, right now, as you're making your, your rounds, Lord, we ask you to stop by Texas, Lord, and touch your daughter, Al, Lord. Lord, right now, we ask you to be with her, Lord, and give her the strength that she needs, Lord. Lord, touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. Lord, right now, we ask you to go in, Lord, and you also touch the baby with your scarred hands, Lord. Lord, wrap your arms around the alley and her whole family, Lord. Lord, we ask you to be with her husband as he secure the border, Lord. Lord, watch over him, Lord, and protect him, Lord. Lord, you be the fence around him, dear Heavenly Father. Now, Lord, right now, we ask you to touch Debbie Chambers, Lord. Lord, right now, we ask you to anoint the medicine that flows to her body, Lord. Lord, right now, you stop the suffering, Lord. Lord, we pray that you give your daughter what she desires, Lord, which is peace, Lord. Lord, right now, be her mind regulator, Lord, her bridge over her troubled waters, Lord. Lord, right now, Lord, we just ask you to be with her, Lord. Lord, be with John as he takes his next treatment, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord, we thank you for where you have brought, brought him to today, Lord. Yes. Lord, right now, we ask you to give Carl strength, Lord. Lord, right now we know that we serve a God that can do all things but fail. So, Lord, we're trusting on your word, the Heavenly Father. And as the book of James says, Lord, we have not because we ask not, Lord. So, Lord, we're asking you, Lord, to come and touch your children, Lord. Lord, continue to be with Je Nora Lee, Lord. Lord, give her all that she needs, the Heavenly Father. Lord, right now, brighten her day, Lord, and strengthen her body, Lord. Lord, right now, the Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who are traveling the dangerous highways and byways, Lord. Lord, watch over us all, the Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for each mother in the sanctuary, Lord, and we thank you for the mothers in the world, Lord. And Lord, I just give you praise for my mother, the Heavenly Father. Lord, right now, Lord, we just want to give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks for waking us up this morning and closing us in our right mind, the Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you thanks for the blood that runs warm in our veins, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks for the rags on our back and the shoes on our feet, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks this morning for the ability to be able to move our limbs. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for dying on the old rugged cross to save sinners like us, Lord. Lord, right now, Lord, we ask you to continue to hold our hand, guide our footsteps to Heavenly Father. Lord, right now, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to touch that person who's laying there in the hospital, racking in pain, Lord. Lord, right now, we ask you to be with your brothers and sisters behind bars, Lord. Lord, let them know, Lord, they may be locked up, Lord, but not locked up from you, Lord. Lord, right now, we ask you to bless our first responders, Lord, our hospital workers, Lord, our teachers, Lord. And most of all, Lord, continue to be with our children, Lord. Now, Lord, if I missed anything, dear Heavenly Father, you know all about it, so I ask you to bless them, Lord. Lord, maybe there's someone here today under the sound of my voice who doesn't know how they're going to make it this week, Lord. Lord, use the preacher, Lord, to touch them, Lord. Lord, right now we pray, Lord, that you dispatch your angels to come and to sit on 
on her raised shoulder, Lord, as she brings the word, Lord. Lord, bless the piano player, Lord. Touch her fingers, Lord. Lord, bless the ushers, Lord. Touch their legs, Lord. Lord, right now, we ask you to touch the finance person, Lord. Lord, continue to touch the choir's vocal cords, Lord. Lord, continue to touch the choir director, Lord. Lord, right now, Lord, we ask you to bless every ministry in this church, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, right now, Lord, that you will send Trinity's people back, Lord, that you will fill these pews, Lord. And Lord, if you do so, Lord, we'd be so careful to give you all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' most holy name, my soul says amen. amen. The Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time and trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom
nature of music. Uh, we have a, a lot of variety in our music. We love music. Amen. So you don't have to go back in there. <laughs> Bring Archer or anybody who wants to come up with Archer. May come. All right. Family can come if they'd like, or they can just stay right there. Come on, Mr. Q. If you open your hymnals to number 34, and I'm going to start on 33, but uh, the readings for you will be actually on 35. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is a gift offered to us without price. So I'm going to ask the family these questions, and you can answer together. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin in your answer? Uh, do you accept the freedom and power given you uh, that God gives us to resist evil, injustice, oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? And your answer again? Okay. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people of all ages, nations, and races? And your answer? All right. And now I'm going to address uh, not only the family, but I'm going to address the whole congregation because we represent the body of Christ. Uh, this family is no longer present here weekly. Uh, they were part of our family, but they are scattered in churches around uh, the, the states, and so we represent the body of Christ here. Uh, and so I'm going to ask this question, and I want everybody to answer the I will, if you will. Don't, don't answer it if you won't. Uh, but will you nurture our church? in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly at some point, and to lead a Christian life. And the answer? Vincent Silver, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. Yeah. Look at all these people. I got to look at them every week. our heads in prayer. Eternal God, I thank you for Archie, and I thank you for his life, and I thank you for his parents and his family, and the church families that will help to raise him, that will present Christ before him, so that there will come a day when he will confirm his faith, when he will proclaim Jesus as his Lord and Savior. We pray for his parents and family as they, they witness Christ to him, as they walk each day and give him values, give him uh, all that they have to give him, Lord, that he may grow up to love you and be a wonderful young man. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right? All right? You want to stay with me the rest of the day? Huh? You look content? Yeah. Yeah. I've never given a screaming baby back to the mom. Archie's just been very good. Thank you. And after the service, I have a certificate for you. All right. God bless you. Thanks for coming. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you. God bless you. No. No. God bless you. The offering is now according to God and our tithe and offerings. Let us.
be generous with my gifts.
Figures is Father, Lord, we come to back once again, Lord, to give you praises and say thank you, Lord. Lord, right now, as your son is about to preach, Lord, Lord, you be with him. Be a fence around him, the Heavenly Father. And Lord, right now, use him, Lord. Lord, let him touch each person in this church, Lord. As the words roll off his tongue, Lord, we pray that they roll into our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We invite Lorraine to come and give us a special peace. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Yes. Um, I have a special song for all of the mothers. This is one of my favorite. Um, I'm going to sing it for you all. And I want to dedicate this song to my own mother. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. definition I found said steadfast in affection or allegiance and the word loyal. It is this definition I want to highlight today in the story of Ruth. Character is what persons do when no one is looking. Character is what persons do when no one is looking. Humans can rationalize just about everything, can't we? I've mentioned a few times in Bible studies and maybe even in sermons here 
uh, that uh, there was a time I got two sodas out of the same machine for the same money. There were times I got lots of candy out of the candy machine uh, with only one coin. And what I did with that at first is not so important as what I did with it finally. The Lord touched my heart and said, you've got to make that right. I one time found a hundred dollar bill. And the sinfulness inside me wanted to grab it up in the pocket and say, all right, it's my day. But faithfulness, character. I had to search out and find who it was. I didn't go around saying, who lost a $100 bill? Because the first person I came into would have said, oh, it's me, me, me. I made him tell me the serial number on the $100. No. I, 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 I didn't do that. If there's no chance of being caught, is it all still good? You see, someone's watching us always. Someone's always watching us. And I don't mean just other people, but God. Today's story shares a story about Ruth, and uh, she was a Moabite woman. And Moabites are descendants of the incestuous offspring of Lot's older daughter. Ruth 1.1, 1, 1, I'll read just a few of the verses again. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, so a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. This man's name in verse 2 was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the, son, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrodites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Trouble hit the family when Elimelech died. The head of the house passed away. But there were still two sons. Instead of going back home uh, for wives, uh, the, the guys stayed there and they found Moabite women. Naomi's sons took for themselves Moabite women. One was Ruth and one was Orpah, not Oprah, but Orpah. Well, first time I read that years ago, that's what I read. It was Oprah. And trouble hit the family again. In verse 4 to 5, they married Moabite women, one named Oprah, Orpah, 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 and the other Ruth. And after they had lived there about 10 years, both the sons died. One of the historic facts that we need to understand is if you didn't have a man to provide for you in this day, you couldn't provide for yourself. Women in that day couldn't own anything. They couldn't have a job. I know that didn't set well with us in today's culture. But that was the culture in which this happened. And so all three of the men in the family died. And in verse 6, when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people back home, by providing food for them, she and her daughter-in-laws prepared to return home from there. Naomi, with family ties back in Judah, decided to head home, and her daughter-in-laws loved her and started with her. Yet not wanting to hinder them, she decided to free them. And in verses 8 to 13, we get the story of Naomi telling the daughters, stay here. Are, are you going to stay with me out of loyalty? Uh, can I have sons again? Would, if I, even if I had sons again, would you wait for them to grow up? And that story that was read to us. She was a great mother-in-law. You know, you hear horror stories of mother-in-laws. I had a great mother-in-law. And Naomi was a great mother-in-law. Have we ever had someone that um, we owed something to let us off the hook? Were you ever driving with someone and you offered to pay for their gas and they said, no, thank you? Were you buying a round of sodas and everybody said, I'm not thirsty? Or Oprah took Naomi up on her offer and returned home. Nothing 
to be ashamed of there. She was going back home to find uh, a, a husband of her own people. And it was an honest offer. But in verse 14 and 18, we see a commitment from Ruth. As they wept aloud again, Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people, the Moabites, and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and God, your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you from me. And Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her. She stopped urging her to leave. Are we willing to follow Jesus no matter where that might take us? See, the safe thing would be for Ruth to have stayed there and found a Moabite husband and, and married, and she was committed to her mother-in-law and to her mother-in-law's God. And so she became faithful, even in the midst of trying times. Can we receive this call today to be faithful no matter what? No matter what the circumstances. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, the Old Testament reads. No matter what. Some of us, it's hard when you preach on Mother's Day, because not everybody had a good mother. You know, y'all didn't have my mom, so you didn't have the best mom. <clears throat> You can bang on one of <laughs> But some of us didn't have great moms. But most of us did. And even if they weren't perfect, most of our moms sacrificed a great deal for their children. Going without so that the children might have. That's, that's faithfulness. That's loyalty. Are we willing to go wherever God leads? even if it's a, a foreign land? Are we, are we more committed to Jesus than any other? You know, in the Bible, it tells us we're to love God more than anyone. Now, I love my mom and dad. Rest their souls. But God tells us to love God. In Matthew 10, 37, Jesus says, Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's not saying that we shouldn't love them. That's saying that we ought to love God even more. It's hard for me to grasp. It's hard for me to wrap my head around that. I, I love my wife. I love my six children. I've got three daughters and three son-in-laws. I love my six children. I love my seven grandchildren. I love my sister and my brother. I love my mom and my dad. But as much as I love them, as much as we love Archie, as much as we love our children, to love God even more. To be faithful to our God. Jesus loves our families, but he wants us to love him even more. Today, as we remember our moms, as we remember their love and their faithfulness, let us remember Ruth and her faithfulness, and let us model that faithfulness. Let us be faithful to God. Amen. 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 So we're going to do something a little different. I mentioned to you that we're going to pour more energies into this service instead of starting an evening service. And so you had a flavor of music today. You had regular hymns. You had uh, country music, uh, bluegrass music, excuse me, excuse me. And uh, um, we, we had a, a gospel rendition of, of a hymn and and, and so now we're going to close the service uh, with a, a video song. The words will be on the screen. And it's the, the song Hosanna by Hillsong. Hillsong is a contemporary worship group. And so uh, the altar is going to be open. If you'd like to come and pray um, about mom, maybe she's like my mom already with the Lord. 
Uh, maybe you'd like to come and, and, and pray for your mom who's still with us. Uh, maybe you'd like to pray for other women. You know, again, Mother's Day not only is hard because uh, there's uh, women who uh, were not good moms in, in our life, but there's also women who wanted to be moms and never could be. There are, there are women who have helped to raise children that weren't their own uh, through adoptive care and other things. So it's, it's a wide spectrum. So come and pray for the women in your life that they would have peace and remain faithful, and that you indeed would remain faithful too, not only to them, but to your God. As we sing this song, Hosanna, by Hillsong. Have we able to stand? i
time to time, we're going to have a contemporary song, a gospel song, just to add new flavor to our service. And we're so thankful that we have just a rich heritage of music here at Trinity. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, go with us now into our day, whether it's calling on mom or visiting mom or just remembering mom, maybe having our children come to be with us or the grandkids coming. I just... I'm just so thankful for my grandchildren. I'm thank, thankful for my wife and the mother she is to all of our children and grandchildren. I pray, Lord, that you would be with us to help us to be godly men and women, boys and girls, that we would be faithful and trust you and trust you no matter what and stay with you no matter what and love you more than any other, even as great as our love is for mom and dad and brother and sister and children and spouse, that our love for you would be even greater. As we, be, as we are faithful, like Ruth was faithful to Naomi. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go forth and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>